Well, I know that, that uh, I think most Mondays I, I mentioned this, but, but today, certainly all the way, uh, felt the excitement to get back with, uh, with this group. And it was good to get going. And, uh, and obviously, you know, we've got an opportunity to, to improve, right, and learn from lessons of the really the first two games. And for those that have played longer, you know, how do you apply all the lessons you've learned and, and put it into having, making this the best week, you know, and talk all the time and, and hit again on it that, you know, the week, uh, of preparation is so important because it, you know, just to give you a chance to have a chance in the game, and then game day you go out and you you get to play the game. But it's uh, to me, it's so important that you have a great week and 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 uh, like the way we started today, and need to continue to have a great week. Paul, you talked a little bit about the offensive line, the penalties, and maybe not getting as much movement at the point of attack. In reviewing the tape. What were some of the things that jumped out? Were some of the pen, penalties avoidable, and also that not getting movement at the point of attack? What what needs to change there? Yeah, I think that um, when you look at it, you always start with, you know, are they do they know what they're doing and they they going all out? And you know, we had a couple early that that we had some uh, mistakes of not uh, doing something that they've done a ton, right? So you, you got to. Got it. That's not giving yourself a chance on it. And then, um, you know, the one thing I do, I know about this group is they will do everything they can. You know what I mean? They're, they're putting it out there. And, and um, I think on some of the penalties, you, you know, they, they, they come up and, and uh, you know, some are definitely avoidable. You know, you, we have a hands to the face. You know, you can't, can't do that. And you've got some where, you know, Guys are going, and it, it, the game happens fast, right? And and but that's why you you go back, and you got to rely on your fundamentals. You know, kind of where you're at, and and I think when when you get off of it, and it's not just uh, that that's across the board. You know, I mean, the penalties were, uh, you know, there were some in the old line. There was some, you know, the the you know the the cut block was, you know, Braylon's kind of back or coming, and Furt got in late. On it, you know. I mean, it's that was a. Um, I think I see what they if they just saw the end of it. I get what they see. Um, you know, tight ends. You know, across the board, we just you got to play clean. You got to play with great. That's why details matter and the fundamentals matter so much. You know, what your pad level is and and um, but but they're they're working at it and and they they value it. So I'm you know, but but obviously we got to. Those those become tough. There's times we overcame, you know, and then there's some times we didn't overcome. Paul, to piggyback off that question a bit, when you went back and evaluated all of the miscues in whole, whether it was penalties or special teams or turnovers, do you feel like a lot of these are fairly correctable, or are you a bit further away than you would hope to be two weeks into the season? No, I think they're, you know, I do believe they're correctable, you know, and I think that. Uh, you know, we, last last drive we jump off sides. That that's something you, you got to correct, right? I'm not saying it won't ever happen again, but you know that's correctable. And then you, I think you got to then continue to look. Okay, are we? What's causing those things? Is there you know some form of indecision? Is there communication? And um, on that one there wasn't. But you don't even want to. You can't assume anything. You know, um, take the delay coming out of the you know it was the injury timeout. You know, you got to address that and, and make sure that everyone has the awareness and the urgency there. And that, you know, some of the, you'll always get some, you know, we had, I thought, a couple, you know, holding calls, kind of the way that where the, we had one where the ball really did hit on the backside and, and you don't think it's going to, and you're kind of putting the, um, that's one of the dangers of that, of that when you hit it back there. You know what I mean? That it, it goes. And so I think that, I do feel turnovers wise absolutely correctable. You know, I mean the you know how we're how we're carrying it, you know, Clay's on that one, you know, the most dangerous is always going to be from behind, you know, and then the next one's the second guy in, you know, but having proper fundamentals and you know, we had a couple other ones that thought we were swinging the ball and we had to clean up the ones that didn't we didn't fumble on, you know, and I think Grams was absolutely 
uh, correctable and, and, and avoidable, you know. So I think, um, yeah, I'm, uh, there are things that, you know, I'm, I'm not saying we've arrived, but, but we can, we can you know, I'm not discouraged that we can't clean that up. Well, as you evaluated the running back, especially Braylon, do you feel like he might need to be a little bit more decisive in where he's running? Because it seems like he's trying to look for the big play, maybe not taking those shorter gains that help to keep the offense on schedule. Yeah, I think that, you know, that um, I think he's been really focused on trying not to do that. Uh, you know, I think there's a couple, you know, we had a couple perimeter runs where, you know, if a guy flashes, then you're coming back and it's not designed to cut back, then it's going to, it's going to be tough, you know, and you get chased from behind. Well, that's probably the reason why you're trying to put it on the outside, you know, so it, it goes, uh, the beautiful thing about this game is it, it takes everyone, you know, and, and, uh, and so I think there's, you know, each one of us has areas that, you know, we can continue to clean up and work on and, and, and yet the beauty of the game is it, it takes all 11 and when all 11 are on, it's, it can be really pretty. And, you know, when it's, when that doesn't happen, then make it a little bit harder. Wondering, there aren't a lot of position coaches around the country who make that switch from offense to defense or vice versa, the way Bob Bostad has. I'm just wondering, how much of an advantage do you think that kind of versatility is for an assistant coach, and why do you think there aren't more guys who kind of make that move? I know there are some unique circumstances around his switch, right. just in general. I, I don't know that I can speak on the whole. You know, I I know I can speak specifically on. I'm Bob, and, and I think we've got a number of coaches that, that fit that. And I think something that I truly value is that I believe a, a good coach is just that, a good coach. And whatever the position uh, is, and, and, you know, obviously it helps when you've got a background. You know what I mean? It's, but I think uh, good coaches, they know how to teach, and, and they have a style of teaching. And then they know how to drill whatever it is that they're that they deem most important for the position you know the, what are the fundamentals of playing that position and i think that's what um i think bob does extremely well you know and like i said we've got, we got a number of coaches on this staff that that you can put them into any room and because it's the way they see the game and approach it and okay what does what does that player need to be able to do uh, to be successful at it, and then how do you drill that, and how do you get them to understand? I think that that's one thing he, he does well, and then he's relentless on uh, on the fundamentals. Paul, uh, you saw Kiantes come up with a couple of big catches last week. Uh, how what skill sets do you feel he brings to this offense that can allow those more dynamic plays to move the chains? Yeah, I think you know he's. Uh, I think he's a. Uh, competitive talented player you know he's got uh the game of football he understands is a is a contact sport and he's willing to do that you know saw it early in the first game and and you know he's got that ability in him he, he can he can run and he's got a good receiving radius and and uh, i think he likes the game of football Paul, I think one of the thing, one of the things we talked to preseason about Graham was when it's third down, do your part to help keep the chains moving. How would you assess? I know it's early, two games, but how would you assess what he's done on third down in his what, things he can control to yeah. keep the chains moving? You know, I think that he's um, I think he's done a number of number of he's had a number of plays, done a number of things where it's okay. This is what it should be like, and, and then. Um, you know, kind of, I think like all competitors, you got to get to where you still, you can't, you can't try to make a play. You got to let plays come, and when they come, you got to be ready to seize it. And and I think, you know, each game there's been a couple of those where I thought he's tried to make a play, and I think there's been a number of them where I've liked where he's, oh, right, he presented itself and he trusted it, and and that. And so I think he's certainly seeing it like when you come off and, you know, he, he's knowing that and, and I think he's done a good job of kind of understanding, you're talking about particularly on third down, kind of the looks, that, you know, you're going to get a, you know, nowadays you're going to kind of have your normal down and distance package and then you're going to see the, the different looks 
on third down and and uh, you you and I both know we all know that as the season progresses though you only get more and more looks at it but I've liked the way that he started there Paul it felt like Graham took a lot more shots downfield yet uh Saturday is that kind of a what you guys can add to the offense with the personnel, or is that a product of what of how Washington State was playing, you guys? Yeah, I think you're right. He he did, and I thought there was a couple times it was I thought it was a good decision, and there's a couple that I thought uh, might have been fortunate. But I think that you know a lot of plays you've got the ability to do it, and then it comes down to playing. You you trust it, then go with it. And the thing that I liked about what he did was I don't think he had any question in his mind. You know, I think that you go back and look at it and, and talk through it with him, and there's some that uh, you just got to kind of assess the assess the whole play and, and play each play. But I thought that, um, you know, the thing he's playing with, I think, more now uh, that he's got to continue to grow and, and con continue building on. But I think he is playing with a little bit more conviction. Paul, um, at the start of the second half, on that uh, on the kickoff return, it looked like uh, uh, Jack was maybe was the first guy who missed missed a tackle there. And I guess I was just wondering, can you speak to one the challenges you know kickers you know face and coming down and trying to make plays like that, and in terms of preparate, preparing a kicker to tackle given the injury risks right. there, how much do you put you know do they get an opportunity to even work on that kind of stuff? Yeah. Um, Really fair. I mean, we do ask them to uh, to fit in the coverage, and um, you know, and we we drill it a lot. Now we're not drilling it live, right? And there's a there's a difference, and um, you know, it helps when you know there's a couple guys who were in position there, and and uh, you know, wasn't seeing what what happened to them. But um, you know, I think that. One thing we like about him being the kicker is he does have some – he's an athlete, you know, and he's got some physicality to him that uh, he can run, and, you know, he's part of that unit. And so I think that, you know, we've had it in the past, and you hope that it doesn't get to that point a lot of times, but we do ask him to be part of the, the coverage and, and do practice that and the work tackling drills and kind of the whole – the whole whole deal, so that they're, when they're in a position like that, you, you give them a fighter's chance. Paul, on the field goal that end of the third quarter, start of the fourth, was that situation that Vito preferred kicking to the north side, or did you just not want to have to try to rush that attempt with the clock running down at the end of the third quarter, and just wanted to? Yeah, set it, up? it was more the latter. You know, just kind of uh, hasn't expressed a strong this or that and and you know it's just one of those things you kind of talk about or think about real quick you know as you go with it but um felt at the time that it wasn't enough to sway it and then therefore wanted to make sure okay we got time and and set and so maybe we should have kicked it the other way <laughs> I know it's early in the season, but there are a handful of Big Ten running backs up near the top of the NCAA rushing statistics again. You look at all the running backs, JT included, in the NFL from the Big Ten. I'm just wondering, what's your explanation for why the Big Ten, year in, year out, seems to produce future NFL running backs and some of the top running backs in the country? Yeah, I mean, I don't have a great answer to that. It just I believe it. You know, I've been around it, and and there's really talented uh, running backs, and there's there's talent really at all positions, and and so um, you know it's not surprising to me. I didn't, um, you know, I haven't done a deep dive on it, but uh, doesn't surprise me. Do you have a kicker who misses a couple tries like that, especially maybe early in his time doing that at the college level? Um, how much do you spend maybe talking to him about that to make sure his head's in a good space? And how much do you feel like you have to evaluate, you know, whether Nate could potentially fill that role? What's the balance in, in striking that with somebody? Yeah, I mean, I think that you're, uh, you know, we'd have a pretty thin roster if we, you know, a guy makes a mistake and and then that's that's it, right? And And I think that we certainly have, 
confidence in him and trust in him and and also understand that happens right and and so I think that you're you know you're always I think every athlete is always competing with themselves first and foremost you know and then uh, how do you how do you help them and I think a big thing is you know going back to your fundamentals you know whenever I think it doesn't matter what position but I think it applies to all certainly that you know if you find yourself struggling a little bit just go back to the fundamentals and the basics and then um, I don't think you can ever instill a false confidence in them but I think you can uh, remind them sometimes why we are confident in them as a player, you know, and it's again that goes across the board. Paul, you mentioned the fourth down play on Saturday. Just curious, when looking back at the film, what you thought about the process of going for it and the play selection and uh, just kind of execution of the play, and then how much do you keep that sequence in mind when making fourth down decisions later in the season? Yeah, I mean, it's it's certainly, uh, you know, I think the 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 result and therefore the play you ran, then you know, you don't like it, right? I mean, but I do I do want to, and I feel that it's, I think it's, it's good to put the game in players' hands as well, right? And you try to have the balance. You know, I think it's important. Um, I do have confidence in our defense, and I also have confidence in our offense. And there are times when, you know what, they've got to, to win games, you've got to, you've got to, Take advantage and, and make those opportunities work for you, and the whole game is a risk, right? And and so uh, when it doesn't go your way, then we got to help each other, and 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 I think that's you know I think there's times where that kind of led off the sequence of you know we we go for it, we don't get it, four plays later they score, but I love the response then, you know, offensively answer the score with a score, and then. Uh, really, our defense had two three and outs. You know, it gave us a chance, and we had a, a really important punt that that landed. You know, we downed it inside the uh, five, and then you know we get a three and out, and they're punting from uh, backed up, and we get good field position, we score right. So I think the game of football is those momentum swings, and it's how do we all play together and play off each other. But you know, specifically, you know, it's yeah. I mean, if I if you knew the result, you would never do it again. But I also know that there's times when you do go for it, and I think you got to empower your players and, and go. And, and and so I think, you know, how you go forward with it, kind of what you said, you know, what is the best play for this one? What is the best? And, and having your guys understand it and then go execute it. Because obviously it wasn't – we didn't execute. We didn't get it.